Hey, it's Dr. Mike T. Nelson here. I've got another video from the Kerrig Institute Human Performance Program. This is from Module 2 on cardiovascular training with Dr. Kenneth J. And he goes through a very uh, detailed instruction of proper rowing form on the Concept 2. Uh, also check out the other video he did of just a very simple uh, two-minute version also. So for all the details, check this one out. Uh, the ball of foot is tremendously important if you want to put a lot of force into the ground. In this case, we're not putting the force into the ground, but we're pushing forward in front of us. But we're still pushing with the ball of foot. And uh, the ball of foot should go on this plate uh, right here. And the way to adjust that in terms of what, uh, what foot size you are is actually just pulling this part up or down. And so when you strap in, the heel should be all the way back and this thing should grip your shoes and your ball of foot should actually be against that plate right there and if it feels like the ball of foot is hanging over the top then it's just a matter of just adjusting it a little bit for a better fit and you'll probably find that that after a few rows and you try it out different positions you'll find your sweet spot Okay, so that's the first thing that you need to adjust uh, when you get on the rowing machine. So both have to be equal, of course. Now, the next thing is this thing over here. What does this do? Anyone know? It's a damper. Yeah, it's a damper. Um, a lot of people will call it the resistance, but that's not entirely accurate because what it does is that it, uh, it adjusts how much airflow that goes into the flywheel. So the higher up the setting is, the more air goes into it, which means when you spin the flywheel, if there is a lot of air in the chamber, it'll slow down faster. So that means in order to keep the flywheel going, you'll have to put more force into it. So it's not like it's actually adjusting and making it heavier from, uh, or, or adding resistance other than it, it allows the flywheel to slow down faster, which requires you to put more force into each pull or increase the stroke rate in order to keep the power output. So, but it's not a resisting setting per se. How many of you, those of you who rode, um, mess around with this and actually adjust it before you start growing. You put it at five, okay. Anyone else? What do you put it at? Nine. Nine? Yeah. yeah. Six. Five to ten. Five to ten? Anyone grow at one? I usually have it at one or two, but I don't know if that's right. Okay. okay. I can tell you. Um, They're wrong. I've never rode. Yeah. Wrong. You're all wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> You're all right. I can tell you, lightweight world champion female indoor rower, she sets it at a one or a two. All right? Heavyweight male world champion, he'll probably set it five or six. Maybe seven. And that depends on how clean it is and air humidity. Because air humidity and how clean the flywheel is, is going to uh, be determining factors of how much resistance there is. So there's actually another way of figuring out exactly where the setting should be. And that's something called the drag factor inside the monitor. Get it up and running here. So you can, and if you need, you probably need to, to, to look with me here. So in the menu, you got different options. If we want to figure out where the drag factor setting or uh, the, the, uh, the chamber opening should be, we go into uh, more options. And then the top one is called display drag factor. Then we push that. And then we need a little bit of space because it needs air flowing into it in order to determine what is the actual resistance on the rower. And as I begin to row, it'll start to display a number. And that number can go probably depending on how clean, new or old, worn the machine is, all the way down to around 70, all the way at, if you put it at one, or all the way up to 220 if we put it at 10. That number is 
basically corresponding to how the feel of it is in terms of if this was a real um, rowboat or scholar that you were sitting in. And in general, the guidelines are a, a setting of 110 to 120, then the feel is much more like a competition racing scholar that sits on top of the water instead of down in the water. So there's a lot less water resistance as you row. And as we increase the drag factor, it's going to feel more and more like a heavy rowboat that sits deep within the water, which means that we will be pushing a lot more water in front of us as we row. General guideline rules is that women row between 110 and 120 in drag factor. And some may go a little bit uh, higher than that, maybe 125 if it's really a muscular woman uh, with long legs and long arms but better to err on the lower side than on the higher side. For men, usually what's been seen is elite rowers when they row, lightweights usually have a preference also in the same area of 110, 120, maybe 125. Heavyweight rowers will usually go between 130 and 140. It's very rare to see anyone go above that. And usually a setting of about on a new rowing machine that's been thoroughly cleaned and is well functioning, a drag factor of around 130 is right there on a clean machine. Okay? So those of you who do this every time you come over and, and row, you're rowing at a way too high drag factor, meaning that it's gonna break your rhythm the cyclical movement because it's going to slow down the flywheel uh, way too fast. So the first thing when you get out on the rowing machines are to figure out your individual drag factor and then just adjust this according. Cool? There's an important aspect of it. Uh, and better go, you can still generate a whole lot of power even if it's all the way at the bottom because it's all about mechanics and how much force you actually drive with into the place.